welcome back to the nurse nook so this video is going to be a what's in my work bag video a while ago i made a what's in my nursing school backpack video and now i finally upgraded so i'm gonna be doing what's in my rn work bag if you guys want to check out that video that i did uh what's in my nursing school backpack i will leave it linked down below so go ahead and click that link if you guys want to check that out but let's get into this video so this is a bag that i use for work i got this from amazon as a christmas present and i love it because of this material can you guys see this it's like super easy to clean like stuff just like rolls off of it i don't even know the name of this fabric but anyways especially working as a nurse and leaving my bag in the disgusting er this is great because if anything gets on it i can clean it one two three and call it a diggity day this is actually going to be somewhat of a modified what's in my work bag because i just went out and cleaned out so much junk that i had in there i just had so much unnecessary stuff like that bag I basically had to carry in in a cart because it was just full of stuff and I couldn't even like hold it on my arm because the straps would be falling off. But I went through and cleared out all the unnecessary stuff and now I only carry what I need to work every day. So the first thing I'm going to show you guys is my stethoscope. This is an obvious essential, um, especially working in the ER because we need to listen to all of our patients' lungs and heart sounds, which that doesn't always happen. But this is an essential, especially in the ER. This is the Littman Cardiology 4 stethoscope, and I love this one. I used to have the classic, I don't know, 2 I think it was, and compared to that one, this one, I literally like put it in my ears and like I before I even like picked it up to listen to the patient's lungs I just had it like on resting on a table or something I think it was and I could hear the conversation outside like down the hall perfectly like it was right in my ear and I'm like listening to see if anybody's saying anything about me <laughs> I'm kidding but it's like you can hear everything with this this is like amazing I love this at the scope the next thing I have in here is this binder. My preceptor actually made me this binder out of the kindness of her heart. Bless her soul. She took the time to make this binder up for me. And basically what it is, is all the important stuff I need to know working in the ER. So she made me all these different tabs, a neuro, respiratory, cardiac, GI. And basically under each tab is just like forms and like how to do stuff. Like under neuro is how to do moderate sedation, everything I need, what equipment I need to gather. And then just like a score tab for whatever it's called. What do I do in a stroke? What's important to do? Support ABGs, give O2, perform stroke assessment, establish onset of symptoms. And she actually took the time to like write this stuff out. Like how awesome is she? I love her for this. This is everything I wanted and it goes through like every single like RSI rapid sequence and a beat. Oh my gosh. Rapid sequence intubation. And it tells you like all the um the dosages and it tells you all the dosages and stuff and cardiac like what to do when someone goes into cardiac arrest like it has everything that i would ever need to know and on the front it just has like all the numbers of anybody i would ever need to call working in the room so bless her for that i love her for this get you a preceptor like mine so the next thing i have in my bag is my planner and i have this in there because one i can't live without my planner and two like stuff always comes up at work and i need to know like when i can go to meetings or for example today i actually had a meeting at work and we had to do like simulations and pretend that we were talking to patients so i had to sign up for that at work so i brought my planner obviously so i can see when i was free so i can you know pencil myself in and basically i just use this like for anything honestly truly i put my to-do list in here if i have like 30 seconds which pretty much that's the only amount of time i get free during the day i'll just like write a to-do list for the week or something i need to do like if something comes up at work i'm like oh i need to go home and do that and i'll just write it in here so that is why i carry this with me this isn't even half of them, but these are the pens I bring. I always bring pens, a whiteboard marker, and a highlighter. In our rooms, which it, most patient rooms are like this, I don't know if I've been in any hospital that didn't have a whiteboard in the patient rooms, but we have whiteboards in every single one of our patients' rooms, and they want us to 
every morning to update our whiteboard and put the date, um, who's going to be the nurse for the day, who's the tech, the charge nurse, and our numbers on there. So that is why I always carry around this um, whiteboard marker. And then my highlighter. I pretty much just use this for, well mainly for discharge instructions. When I'm giving my patients discharge instructions, I'll like highlight important things like come back if you know you have trouble breathing or I don't know, whatever it is, I'll just highlight whatever is important that will stick out to them. And also, um, when I make my little brain sheet, which is, uh, I put my patients on, like I make four little squares out of a paper, and then I put each patient on there, and then throughout the day I'll put like whatever I need to remember to do with them. I'll just like highlight stuff that's important, so that's why I have this in there. Now this is like barely a quarter of the collection of post-it notes that I have with me. I literally have a post-it note for everything, like little notes. Anytime a nurse or a doctor or somebody with more experience than me tells me anything that I'm like, oh, I didn't know that, or oh, that's good to know, I write it down on a little post-it note, and then I have a little book that I go back and like write everything important. Like, just like little stuff, like this one says, fresh frozen plasma helps with swelling. So I had a patient with angioedema, they had allergic reaction to a medication and I'm like, why would we give them fresh frozen plasma? They didn't lose any blood. And it's because fresh frozen plasma helps with the swelling. And I didn't know that. So of course I wrote that down. And another thing that I didn't know, kidney patients may have elevated troponin levels. I had no idea about that. So anything that somebody tells me or that I think is really important to know and I need to embed into my head, I write it down on post-it notes. And then by the end of the week, I have all these post-it notes and it's just like a mess. So that's why I like to transfer them into a book. But I always keep like a fresh stack of post-it notes so I can write whatever comes across me that day. Probably the most important thing I have in this bag is my chapstick, my Carmax. I love this stuff. I'm the type of person that needs something on their lips constantly. I'm that person that comes out of the patient room and is like, I don't know what it is. I just have this thing where I cannot have dry lips. Like, I can't even look at people if I don't have Carmax or some kind of lip gloss, something on my lips. I'm like, don't give me, I'm ugly. So that is why I literally have like three of these. I have like my EOS, my Carmax, and my Blistex on there just in case, God forbid, one goes missing. I have like two backups. So the next thing I have in here is this emergency and critical care pocket guide ACLS version. This is amazing, especially if you are an ER nurse. I highly, highly recommend this book. This book has like all the important stuff in addition to my binder. Like it goes through ACLS like in detail. It shows you all of the different rhythms, focus, tachycardia, how to treat it. Is, uh, is the patient stable? What to do if they're stable? Like it has so much information in here. And then they have tabs at the bottom. So the first red tab is ACLS. And then they have airway. And under airway, they have like airway management, rapid sequence intubation. I feel like I've said that 30 times today. Ventilator guidelines. General care for stroke patient. Oh, this is under neuro now. So they go through strokes, CT scans in here, pediatric. Oh, I'm just going, I'm skipping around in this thing. The next tab is pediatrics, and they have like pediatric cardiac arrest, pediatric tachycardia, and it basically just tells you like everything you need to know about each thing and what's important to take care of. They also have medications tab, which goes through like the most common medications, dosages, and what to look for in each medication. And at the back, they have medical emergencies, like trauma, abdominal pain. And oh my gosh, you know what? I've never actually gotten to this tab, but this is really interesting. Under the abdominal pain tab, they have like epigastric lower quadrant, upper quadrant, they have like what could possibly be going on depending on which area of the abdomen the pain is coming from. So diffuse pain, for example, could be pancreatitis, peritonitis, appendicitis, gastroenteritis, dissecting or rupturing aortic aneurysm, 
midline plane could be bladder infection aortic aneurysm uterine disease right upper quadrant pain could be gallstones hepatitis liver disease pancreatitis appendicitis right lower quadrant could be appendicitis rupture ectopic pregnancy enteritis diverticulitis ovarian cysts kidney stones and so on and so forth this is actually really cool I'm learning while I'm teaching you guys. Probably one of the really interesting tabs on here is poisons. Over here they have like um, what to do if you have a patient that overdose on medications like acetaminophen, aspirin, sedatives, what to look for, what their signs and symptoms are going to be, what to be cautious about with these patients. For example, if your patient overdoses on a sedative, some signs and symptoms are going to be weakness, drowsiness, respiratory depression, apnea, coma, hypotension, bradycardia, hypothermia, and death. Some things you want to be cautious about with this patient is to protect the patient's airway. So this is pretty cool. I love this little thing. Again, this is from my preceptor. You see how she takes such good care of me? She like gets all this stuff for me and like prepares all these things. I love her so much. Something else I usually carry with me is tape. This is just basic, regular, old hospital tape. I always just keep one with me because you never know when you're going to need it. I'll just try to throw it on the end of my stethoscope sometimes. But I kind of stopped doing that because it would fall just like that it just falls out all the time and i always lose them so i just like try to keep it in my pocket or something and this is one of the last things i keep with me in my work bag mind you this is minus all of my snacks and tea and water that i bring with me every day this is minus the food because y'all know i'm a big foodie at heart and half of my bag in real life is always just food so this is besides that but one of the last things i'm going to show you guys is this book that i keep with me this is where i write down all of my youtube video ideas honestly sometimes i'll just be working you know doing my little thing and i'll come up with like a great idea and i'm like oh my god that's such a good video idea let me write it down because i always come up with things when i'm not expecting it like i'll be thrown into a situation at work or something will happen and it'll just spark a light in my brain i'm like that's a great video idea all right guys there you have it that is a peek into my work bag make sure you guys stay tuned because i will be continuing the emergency nurse crash course you guys seem to really love it so i'm going to be continuing with the video so make sure you guys stay tuned for that